All right, guys, so this is where we got to. Uh, last time, we were doing the card combinations. We got up to three card combo, and I believe we finished that completely. So the next thing to do is to start the analysis to see what has been uh, done, what was won, and so on. I did complete this list that I was telling you about earlier, and this is basically the data that I plan to get out of the entire system once we're done. So here you can see, for example, when we start your hand, the flop, the turn, and the river, and then every single case we see what we're going to uh, be getting as data. So first, when you have your hand, you have no idea what anybody else has, so I cannot make any uh, possible prediction as to what could happen. The best I could tell you is what's the best thing you can do with what you have. Uh, this here, probably you can find it online as a table and it tells you pretty much which hands you should play and which hands you should not. In my case, I would like to leave this so that, for example, when the flop opens up, you can pretty much track whether your hand is getting stronger over time or weaker over time. So when the turn comes, basically you will realize that, okay, my hand's getting weaker and weaker every turn. And then gives you probabilities of what could happen. Now, when we come to the flop, uh, the turn is probably the easiest, but I'll talk about the flop first. So first, uh, for you, the player, uh, what will be done is, again, predicting best that you can have. So once you open up the flop, you now have five cards that you know we need to do, uh, we need to do a two-card prediction. So this is the card combo deck that we're going to use to get a total of seven cards and then see what the best five card combination is. As far as what the other players might or might not have, uh, we know the flop, which means all players have these three cards, and we can predict the two cards that they have in their hand to tell you basically what is the best thing that they are holding at the time. Now, this may not be very useful since it will change, but what I think is if somebody is bluffing, you have a chance to find out. So basically, you will be able to compare the people playing to the uh, odds that you are finding here. The next thing we could do with the flop is get a four-card prediction, but that's going to be a very, very hard thing to do. Um, as you remember, when we did the three-card combo, we had about 17,000, I believe, uh, different combinations. So if we're going to go to a four-card combination, we're going to be looking at that times 50. Actually, not exactly that times 50. Let me see if I can go ahead and show you guys. So what we did earlier was with the three cards was that we had 52 minus 4. Typically, that's 48. So we had... If you do 48 times 47 times 46 for three cards, and then divided by three factorial, that would give us, yeah, 17,296. Now, if we were to do four cards, right, which means you have three, so we would do 49, 48, 47, 46, divided by four, three, two, and one. Let's see what this would be. That would be 200,000, above 200,000 combinations. So that's a crazy amount of processing for the computer to do. Uh, we could have it run. Now, the beauty of this is that it will tell you what is the absolute best thing that any other player can possibly get. That is a very important thing to know. The next thing would be the turn. And again, we would have the same uh, system where you're going to know what's the best thing you can get. You're going to know the best thing that uh, the other person has currently in his hand. Obviously, in every part of these, you're going to know what you have. So uh, it's not a case of probability to know what you have, um, especially when you get to uh, the turn. So at the flop, you know you have five cards, you know what you have, you know the best thing you can get. Same thing here, you have six cards now, so you know the best of that. That's a very simple, direct process, and then we calculate what's the best that you can get after. Finally, the river, uh, self-explanatory. Uh, there's already five cards on the table, so there's no need for uh, to, to check what the best that some other player has is. And that, that, is, uh, that is pretty much it for what we're going to calculate. So we'll get to this list way later. For now, let's go ahead and try to... Right now, we're dealing with the three-card combo, 
and with the three card combo we have four cards from the initial uh, array so four plus three is seven which is exactly the number we want so we're taking the first four cards from here adding all possible combinations I'll just go back to zero here these are all possible combinations for that specific one and again there's about 17,000 of them in this scenario uh, okay so the next thing is going to be to add these up <clears throat> and the way to do that is actually not that hard I'm going to go ahead and index the array first of all there we go just to get the first number which should be equivalent to that over there I'm going to move these to the side so that they're out of the way and start a new analysis chapter with this array right here let me connect that and let us run it so that this will process and give us the number now we don't have a big while loop set up yet so the program only runs once and then stops the long processing time basically is just to process the 17,000 combinations so here we are this thing has finished and this is where we are uh, with this uh, deck assortment so the first thing I'm going to do is going to add these up each column and add each row by itself so how do we do that it's pretty very simple all we have to do is take a for loop now we do know that there are uh, four different sets so if we take this first for loop it's going to divide it into fours if I take numeric and do a complete sum of everything in the array the output of that is going to be an array with the sums of each single one individually. So I'm going to put that right here. And there we go. And let's run this again. Again, it needs to process the 17,000 possibilities. Um, it's only taking a few seconds, not too long. So as you can see, we have three right here, zero here, four here, and zero here. Obviously, if one of these reaches five, so for example, uh, here we have four diamonds, right? So this will not reach the five uh, because here we're only identifying the sum of the sum of uh, the signs. But if I were to convert this to a spade, right? And let's convert this to a spade as well. Now, here I should have, I believe we should have five spades over here unless there's an overlap. Let's go ahead and test that. So processing 17,000 combinations again, and there we go, and add it to 5. This 5 should immediately signify that you have a uh, flush. Now, we can test for a straight by adding up the numbers in a different way, and we'll get to that in a bit. So the next thing to do from here is going to be to go ahead and check if these add up. So let me go ahead and well, let me see how I'm going to do that and I'll get back to you guys. All right, guys. So to add up the rows, we have multiple ways of doing that. Um, I think what we could do is to create a for loop that would basically isolate those and process them the way we want. So if we take an array subset, let's take an array subset of this array and disable indexing. So there we go. And throw up the help for this. So by looking at this, we can go ahead and select the index and how much of it to take. So basically, the index that we are going to take first is going to be the um, column that we're going to choose. I believe it's the column. So the column that we're going to take is the zero width in this case, if this is working correctly. And the length, we're going to take all of it. Oh, no, actually the length would be one in this case, I believe. And then we would take the entire uh, remainder of that. So this is basically what we would be left with. So there we go on that. Uh, this subarray then, we can add it up and do as we did before and have that out here and create an indicator for this array. Now we would just need to say that we want to do this 13 times. And this array, if we did it correctly, 
should represent the entire number set. Let's go ahead and check. So it should be 11111. Okay, let this process to 17,000 first. There we go. So we got 5011, so we did it the wrong way around. So basically, we would need to connect the one here and the I there. There we go. Let's go ahead and try it now. There we go. One 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 zero 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 one. Perfect. It is doing what we want it to do. So uh, let me just make this. Try to get all the numbers in here. Almost all showing. Whoa, too big. This thing is very hard to fine tune. There we go. This appears to be almost the right length. Perfect. So now here we have the sums of each one of those. So this should tell us if we have in any uh, case, for example, multiples of the same number. So for example, let's put in all these tens here. So now we should get a four on the tens right here. Three. Why did it only get three? It only got three because this ten is not added. We're only adding the first four, if you guys recall. So now, even though we have an error, uh, the error will be ignored because we have not added an error handler yet. This should... Huh. Why did this not work? Ah, <laughs> this did not work because, as it so happens, the two tens were actually the same block which was replaced twice with the number one. If you guys you remember what we discussed earlier, about how these this block is replaced and this was replaced twice because it was 210 in both cases so there we go so now here we have a four four of a kind basically so this is a win for us and here for example we only have uh, four of a, of a kind for these so this is exactly the kind of uh, numbers that we need so basically this over here is a direct influence uh, a direct tells us directly about a flush while this thing here can tell us about a lot more this can tell us if you have a pair this can tell us if you have I'm gonna put these all separate if we have a two pair this will tell us if we have three of a kind and if we have four of a kind and even if we have a full house all of these are so easily found in here. So right now we have a four, which is four of a kind. It's that simple. This actually can also tell us what our high card is. If you have a high card, you can figure that out from right here. So that means the only thing we're missing is a straight, and obviously a straight flush. So those are the only things that are missing. Now, a straight is a combination of this, uh, of this system here, right? So the way a straight would work is if we have five numbers in a row here, that is a straight. A straight flush means we have five numbers in a row, and those same five numbers that are straight are also flush. So straight and straight flush is the hardest one to identify. Uh, we can obviously go and push for getting the uh, a royal flush, uh, but yeah, I'm going to exclude that from our calculations here. So, so what we need to do now is to simply now, okay, uh, what I'm thinking about, sorry about that, guys, but what I'm thinking about is that I would like to 
more than just tell you what you have, what the probability is, I would like to give you the probability of something happening more than your thing. For, uh, let, me, let me explain what I mean. What I mean is that if you have a pair, right, you can have a pair of twos and you can have a pair of aces. Obviously, the pair of aces is more powerful than a pair of twos. Also, what I would like to do is that add that into the prediction algorithm. I don't want it to just tell you that, okay, most likely someone else has a pair. I want it to tell me that, okay, the other person's pair is probably this number. If you guys understand what I mean. Therefore, each one of these will need to have a subcategory. So the flush, for example, the data I need from the flush is going to be the, 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 the type of the card and the, um, let's see, do we need a high card? No, this is a flush, yes. We're going to need a flush and the high card of the flush and the highest card. So these two details here should be enough to tell me what there will be. So for example, you can have spades, you have a flush of spades with a high card. Does that work or does that not work? I think that does not work in a flush. That's a very interesting question because a flush means you have five cards of the same type. So if we have five spades, does that mean those five spades are as powerful as another five spades? Uh, the reason I'm asking this, guys, is because in poker, you take the five best card combination that you have, and that is all that counts, which pretty much means that uh, you can have a split pot in many cases, depending on what you have. I'm not sure. We're going to have to evaluate this. We can do this at a later time, I guess, for now. Let's go ahead and look at what we have here. Let me condense this, and I'll get back to you guys. So here we are, guys. This is what we have. So I'm going to end this episode here, and we'll go ahead and work more on this next time. See you soon.